Ladies and gentlemen, two-thirds of people will live in cities by 2060. Yet half of the urban fabric required to accommodate them is not yet built. The built environment represents one of the biggest global investment opportunities of the next decade. These investments are a pathway to enhancing sustainable development and the quality of life, and if done well, an opportunity to combat the climate crisis. As the high-level champion for COP28, my goal is to mobilize stronger, more ambitious climate action in the private and public sectors and to bring these actions in line with limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. With you today are many members of my team, as well as members of the Building to COP Coalition. We are promoting the UN Climate Change Race to Zero campaign and the 2030 Breakthrough Outcomes. A key sector for us is the built environment. These are the structures in which we live, work, go to school, and seek the services we need. According to the United Nations, these buildings are responsible for about 40% of global energy-related carbon emissions and consume 50% of all extracted materials. In 2021, global emissions of building operations reached an all-time high of around 10 gigatons of carbon dioxide. This is a 2% increase of the pre-pandemic level. In this critical decade, it is sobering that the sector grew in emissions in the past year. It also illustrates the challenges we face. But we are seeing signs of change. At a business level, organizations like the Great Portland Estates in the UK and the Saint Gobain in France are demonstrating how internalizing carbon pricing can help drive decision making. Cities are leading the way and leveraging their influence as owners and investors of huge property portfolios. Over 1,000 cities across the world have pledged to cutting their emissions in half through the UN Climate Change Race to Zero campaign. And the whole life carbon performance of their built assets is a huge portion of this commitment. The opportunities for cities' inclusive growth agendas are significant in the built environment. Up to 30 jobs are created for every $1 million invested in renovations and new constructions. These are just some examples of the signs of change from non-state actors in the built environment. They are driving the ambition loop, demonstrating to national governments that the market is indeed ready for ambitious policy change. And national governments are listening, too. In Egypt at COP27, a country-led commitment for a building's breakthrough by 2030 under the leadership of France and Morocco was promoted and gained the support of countries around the world. Now is the time to shift from summits to solutions. We must meet the 2030 breakthrough outcome to cut sector emissions in half by 2030. This means all new buildings must be net zero carbon in operation, whilst also cutting in half their embodied emissions. The urban development that will be required across the next decade and beyond, if not planned sustainably, risks significant impacts on nature and biodiversity, which support our food systems social and civic spaces, and an overall quality of life. They can also act as our first line of defense against the impacts of climate change. For those of you who have not yet joined the Race to Zero campaign, take this as an opportunity to meet our team and join us today and help us move the market. I look forward to more signs of leadership from this critical sector as we approach the COP28 in the United Arab Emirates later this year. Thank you very much.